Let's do a little Bible study this morning. Amen. So I'm in John and I'm going to be in multiple places in John. And this is the part where the descendants of Moses come to Jesus and they ask him for bread because Jesus fed them bread before. But Jesus says that I am the bread from heaven. Now, I'm going to continue right here. Jesus tells them, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. Then the people began arguing and arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I live because of the living father who sent me in the same way. Anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did. Even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. That's pretty grotesque. That's pretty gross, according to man. But when you think about these things, when you start dwelling on the word of God, start dwelling on what Jesus says, he says that he's the bread that came down from heaven. He says that he's the bread of life. So these people, they were trying to understand. They were like, listen, will not you just give us bread like Moses did back then? But Jesus said, well, I am the bread of life. If you feed off of me, then you'll have eternal life. But people are like, nah, man. He said, we don't know what you mean. We don't know what you're talking about. Just like today, people don't know what Jesus was talking about. What you talking about? Drink your blood and eat your flesh. What you talking about, Jesus? You know what? That's gross. I'm going to skip that. That's what people are saying today. They're skipping that. Because they don't want to know what it means. Because he's talking about blood and flesh. But check this out. His disciples reacted in the same way a bit. It says many of his disciples said, this is a very hard teaching. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? Does this offend you? Do you think, like after you just read all this or after I read this to you, is this offensive to you? Eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Or are you thinking about it? Are you wondering about it? Are you wondering about why would Jesus speak in, su in such a way? You want to know why he spoke in such a way? Eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Because we're just so worldly. And Jesus put it in, in such a form so that we can truly understand. He said, listen, why don't you just tell us plainly? He said, I am trying to tell you plainly. I am the bread from life. If you feed off of me, then you will have eternal life. If you feed off of my words, then you will have eternal life. If you just accept my words and have my words give you nutrition. Not just your body nutrition, but your soul nutrition. Because my, my words are eternal. They're forever. So when you feed off of my words, when you feed off of my promises that's why he says repeatedly i tell you the truth when you feed off of my truth 
then you will have eternal life. That's all there is to it. But a lot of people find that offensive because they don't want to think about it. 62. Then what will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplish nothing. And the words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones they didn't believe. And he knew who would betray him. I want to dig into this a little bit. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. This is what happens. A lot of people think that they can mix the things of the, of the spirit of God. They think that they can mix the Holy Spirit, the things of the Holy Spirit with their, their own thing. Like the accomplishments of the Holy Spirit with their own accomplishments. And they think that God will be impressed by that. As long as a person goes to church and, they, and the pastor or the preacher says, yeah, the Holy Spirit is here. They think, well, okay, yeah, the Holy Spirit is here because the pastor says so. So, well, why can't the why can't the Holy Spirit be living in you? Or why can't the Holy Spirit be in the building? Or why can't the Holy Spirit be in your house before 11 o'clock or before 10 o'clock before you go to service? The Holy Spirit goes where he goes. No one commands the Holy Spirit. No one says, oh, the Holy Spirit is here. And then the Holy Spirit comes along. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm here. No. Nah. The Holy Spirit is there when God says, Holy Spirit, go there. Holy Spirit, go towards that, that person right there. Holy Spirit, talk to that child over there. Holy Spirit, talk to that elder over there. No one commands the Holy Spirit. No one. That's like a human commanding God. That's like a, a, a clay pot controlling and commanding the potter. Let me show you something else here. Right here. No, right here. Jesus replied, I assure you, and he's applying to a religious leader. I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. You see, humans cannot reproduce a spiritual life. So it's impossible for human beings to produce a spiritual life. Now, what happens is, is that like we think that we can produce any kind of spiritual life we want. But there's only two sides to the coin. There's a spiritual life through Jesus and then there's a spiritual life through the devil. The devil will tell you to cling to your flesh and say, oh, yeah, you can receive a spiritual life through, through just doing good works through your own body. But God says, no, I want to do the good work because I want to receive the worship. I want to receive the praise because I'm the one that created your body. I'm the one that created your soul. I'm the one that created everything that your body and your soul live off of. Check this out. I created your soul so that you can receive my Holy Spirit. I created your bodies so that you can do work through your soul and the Holy Spirit can do work through your soul and your soul can work through your body. So therefore, mm, the root, which is Jesus, the root can get the praise and the glory. It is not us. It's not us. It's Jesus. It's not us. It's God. It's not us. It's the Holy Spirit. So there's nothing that we can do on our own to impress God except have faith. And that faith, that faith leads towards us receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? Check this out. I'm going to reveal this to you because a lot of people don't know about this. John chapter 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him 
the word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. I want to get into this. God created everything through him. Through who? Through Jesus Christ. And nothing was created except through him. Human beings were not created except through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Jesus knows our souls. Jesus knows every man on the face of the earth. Every woman on the face of the earth. No matter how powerful they are. No matter what position they have. It doesn't matter who they are. Jesus knows them. Because every single one of them was made through Jesus. And for Jesus. And nothing could have been made except through him. So therefore, when we have faith. And our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus knows about it. When we have faith in his words and start trusting in his words, Jesus knows about it. And then that's when he sends the Holy Spirit down to us so that the Holy Spirit can live in us. So that the Holy Spirit can do work in us and through us so that God can get the glory. God can get the praise. God can get the worship. So it's not about us. It's about him all the time. When we think about him, when we think about his words, when we think about Jesus' words and Jesus' teachings, then the Holy Spirit comes down and lives in us. When we're so curious about the word of God, the Holy Spirit comes down and lives in us. And then he tells us, this is what it means. You see, if you're curious enough about the word of God, if you're interested about the word of God and you're thinking about the word of God, like, what did he mean by that? I don't really understand that, but... I still, I still want to wonder about that throughout the day. If you have a mindset like that or a heart like that, Jesus is going to know about it because you were made through Jesus and for Jesus. And so he'll send you the Holy Spirit to remind you of somewhere else in the Bible or another teaching um, of the Lord Jesus Christ in another section of the Bible. And then the Holy Spirit will start to connect the dots for you. He won't tell you everything in the Bible because he... Your mind will be completely blown at that time if you know everything in the Bible as you read it. All right? So, I just wanted to tell you that it is not our human accomplishments. I mean, like, you know, a lot of people just clap from one another and they applaud one another. And, okay, all right, that's all right. But that doesn't impress God. It doesn't impress Jesus. It is Jesus, the one who we were made through and for, that gets the worship and the praise. All of it, not just on a Sunday. And I'll tell you one other thing. That the Holy Spirit does not have a time schedule. The Holy Spirit does not come at 11 or 10 o'clock or 10.30 or does not stop at 1 o'clock. Or when your church says, okay, okay, the service is over. Okay, the Holy Spirit is not here anymore. No. You want to see the Holy Spirit move? The Holy Spirit should move for three hours, four hours, five hours. The Holy Spirit says, okay, I want people to stay here because I have a lot to say. We have a lot of praising to do. We have a lot of worshiping to do. We have a lot of anointing to do. I know people want the time schedule and stuff like that. They want to, you know, just stay in church for a time. But you know what? If your church doesn't allow you to stay there and praise the Lord or doesn't allow you to, you know, fall down on the altar, then I guess just go home and praise the Lord from there. Remember, this is a relationship between you and God, not a relationship between you and your church building or not a relationship between you and your denomination. No. And the Bible says nothing like that. But we as men, we like to create things like that. Remember, human accomplishments mean absolutely nothing. They accomplish nothing. Denominations accomplish nothing. Time schedules accomplish nothing as far as a relationship with the Holy Spirit. But that's all I gotta say, guys. Just wanna say I love you. Please continue studying your Bible, especially um, the book of John. And if you don't understand, then just have your mindset on what you don't understand and the Holy Spirit will come to you because everyone was made through Jesus and for Jesus and Jesus knows exactly what you're thinking. Jesus knows exactly how you're feeling. If you're curious and you're interested truly about the word of God, every word that Jesus has said, then Jesus will send the Holy Spirit and say, this is what it means. 
It may take an hour. It may take two days. It may take two weeks. But he'll give it to you when he's ready. All right? But that's all I got to say, guys. Just want to say I love you. Jesus first, God first, and may the kingdom always come first. Stay blessed in the Holy Spirit. Amen.